can see the sun coming up. It's between trees. You know, it's kind of low on the horizon. And I guess we're getting ready to, let's see, spring forward and fall back. So right now, instead of 7 o'clock, it'll be 6 o'clock. So that makes more sense. Or is it 8 o'clock and now it'll be 7 o'clock? Well, whatever clock it is. <laughs> it's going to be an hour earlier. Okay. And I kind of like that. Maybe it gives me more time to get stuff done. Maybe it doesn't. Have you ever noticed how people take things to an extreme? You know, that Jesus had that problem. They were called the zealots. You know, and that's where we get the word zealot from. It's from, believe it or not, the zelotes or zealot party. It's that they were a group of political activists. They were a uh, action party, political action party, a PAC. They were people that, much like a Tea Party, if you want to call them that, or the Occupy people, were adamant about getting one thing, and they were focused in on it to such an extreme degree that they were even willing to kill for it. Now, not everybody in the Zealot Party was going to kill for it, but anyone that was part of this movement the zealots pretty much would die rather than give up the idea of freedom because you see they believed like a lot of Americans do that you got to be free and they were willing to sacrifice even Jesus to get that freedom you see what's coming living here in America what are you sacrificing for your rights do you think that being a Christian means you get to have all your rights and do what you want to do politically and socially and morally. Or rather, is there a citizenship you have in heaven and a greater kingdom that's being worked out here on earth that you can't see that passes beyond borders and boundaries that doesn't limit itself to one party or the other and doesn't really care who's in office because we know who's in charge. God. So, in life, have you become a zealot? Have you gotten carried away into the world and its ways by being so wrapped up in what you think you have to do because you're the one, you know, to fix it, when it says that God puts in office whom he chooses. Now, you can pretend like, you know, this whole democracy thing and electoral college and everything else all works out, you know, and God isn't involved. Yep, you can pretend that. Okay. And you can pretend that God isn't involved in changing the man's heart, you know, that turning it what's the way that he chooses to turn it. Just because the Bible says so doesn't mean it's true. Okay. And you could pretend that God just set people in positions of authority over us to protect us and to, you know, be in some way instructing us, you know, in, in ways that we don't, you know, aren't really supposed to resist, but we're supposed to pray for, you know, according to what the scripture says, you know, and respect them. You could pretend the Bible doesn't say that. Okay, <laughs> you know, you could pretend that Jesus isn't real. Okay, <laughs> and that God doesn't exist. Oh boy, you know, are you a zealot? <laughs> Have you gotten carried away in the world? Are you kind of like wrapped up in the political system, you know? I mean, nowadays people are saying, you know, that they want to put Christians in office, and I keep thinking, why? <laughs> why not? Pray for the person in office and get what you want from God. Seems to make more sense to me. Maybe you might even pray for his salvation, whoever it may be. Maybe it's your city councilman. Maybe your police officer. Maybe someone that just is over you at work. Man, maybe God put you right where you're at today because you're kind of like learning to not be a zealot. But you're learning to not be an extremist, but to be a realist of the kingdom of God. Because 
you're not wrestling against flesh and blood. You're kind of wrestling against things you can't see, you know, like principalities, democracies. <laughs> yeah, democracies, republics. Yeah, republics, nations, peoples. Man, you know, you could, you could influence all of them just by praying, fasting, witnessing. Man, I thought I had to register to vote. Frankly, I've never voted a day in my life, but I prayed for every sucker that got elected. God put him there, I'm praying for him. Because you know what? God put him there, so I'm going to pray for him. <laughs> you know, it says when the, when the king's heart is turned towards God, the people rejoice. When it's turned towards other things, they mourn. Hmm. Sounds a little fickle to me. Maybe, like, we could turn his heart by praying for God to do it for us. Works for me. You know, I really am a political activist, but I do it in a spiritual kingdom, and I'm able to get everything I want. Yep. Sometimes I think that you don't realize that the reason why we have that man in office is because I want him there so that God can reveal the hearts of the men and women that should be praying for salvation of the world and not just themselves and their nation. Because I don't see it as being, oh, that big a problem where we're at. I think sometimes we forget that we're supposed to go out and teach all nations and we're not supposed to teach them the American way. But I think Jesus is called the way, the truth, and the life. That it's not about what America can do, but it's about what God can do. I don't know what kind of political activist you are, but I hope you're a spiritual realist. Avoid extremes. Apply your mind to instruction and correction and your ears to words of knowledge. Proverbs 23.12 When I first became a Christian, I heard a message about keeping my mouth shut. <laughs> So I made a decision the next day, I wouldn't open my mouth to say anything. I was determined not to get myself in any trouble with my words. The next morning, I did not say a word for several hours. Look a shock. Then somebody asked me, what's your problem? <laughs> that made me mad all over again. Eventually I learned that the extremes never make us or make our days go right. Reading God's Word helps us find balance to face everything that comes our way. The Word says we are to be well balanced, or let your moderation be made known unto all men. And moderation means balanced, moderate. <laughs> because the devil seeks someone to devour. 1 Peter 5.8 The reality is, is if you're caught up into anything, even religion, even Jesus, even faith, even healing, whatever it may be, if you've gotten and gone over the top on it, God really probably isn't honoring it, but your emotions are, because they're all wrapped up in it. And that's usually how people become extremists, become zealots, become over the top, because they're not really on fire for God. They're on fire with the feeling that they have. And that's really how it gets deceptive, because you get caught up in this whole idea Oh, we're going to change the world for democracy. Oh, we're going to change the government for freedom. Oh, we're going to change our local government for the poor people. Oh, we're going to spread the wealth. Oh, we're going to save the world. Oh, we're going to feed the poverty. And Jesus says, yeah, right, sure. <laughs> it's the end of the world, folks. It ain't going to happen the way you think it is. So you could either do it your way, political activism, you know, and social realism if you want to call it that you know where you really think you're doing something important and you really aren't <laughs> or you could get into the spiritual reality of dealing with all the issues that you just think you got to do something about and take them to god with it and he'll do something about them for you well, well, well wait a minute you mean i as a created being don't have to solve the world's problems but God, who created the universe, will solve the problems for me? Gee whiz, what kind of political action party is that? 
you know, that's no fun. Maybe, but it's the surest way to get something done.